going on everybody it's slappy mcphee here at the retro arena and we have another tutorial that we're bringing you today today's tutorial is going to be going over splash screens be they static or uh, video based right we'll go ahead and knock out the static splash screens first because those are fairly easy to work with and very simple so first thing that you want to do is have a static image that you want to use. And what I'm going to do is switch over here to my desktop and I'll pull up my browser, just pick an image to go ahead and download and then move over into the build. And then we'll go ahead and select it. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and type in retro gaming wallpaper 1080p. Come here into images and it's going to, of course, give you all kinds of different uh, options in there. And as you can kind of see when you scroll over their different resolutions, well, if you don't want to bother to mess with having to change to a custom resolution, you can come here into tools, go to size and choose exactly. And now you're going to choose. So in this case, I'm doing 1920 by 1080 because that is what I have going on for a display with my uh, Odroid XU4. Now you may end up choosing uh, 720p if you have a lower resolution display you're going to be connecting to. Uh, you might choose to go with a 4-3 aspect ratio instead, you know, depending on if you're going to go ahead and, and plug into a CRT display. If you happen to have uh, 4K, you might want to do that. There's, there's all kinds of different variables and things to look at, right? But this is one of the most common so this is where we're going to go with so I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to go with this wallpaper here what I like to do especially if I'm using Firefox is I like to go to copy image location and actually just open it in a new tab that way I don't run into any types of pop-ups or any type of silliness etc so I'm going to save image as and we're going to do And this is what I'm going to go ahead and call. Now you can do PNGs, you can do JPEGs, etc. You know, your mileage is going to vary depending upon how good of an image quality you have going on here. All right, so now once you have this downloaded, as you can see, I kind of did some testing here, but we'll go ahead and open the file location. And you can see some of the items we're going to be going over here for this tutorial. Just due to the way Linux works sometimes, and it can be a little bit finicky, I actually should have named this without any spaces. I just prefer to do that. I know that it doesn't necessarily always have to work that way, but at the end of the day, I don't think that there's a big deal about having all the characters put together. So then you're going to need to open up a, another browser window and head on over to your board. Click into splash screens. I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop this over. All right, so it's there now. So now we're going to go ahead and switch on over to the video capture and take a look inside our build. So you're going to want to go ahead and scroll on over to options and down to splash screens. All right, so before doing a choose splash screen, you can actually go in and do a preview. And in this case, I'm just going to view a single splash screen. You could do a, a slideshow or play a video preview as well. We're going to go ahead and view a single splash screen. And we're going to go to own extra splash screens from that directory. And we see the image that we placed. And as you can see, it displays fine. So it should be all right for us to choose that. So we'll back out. And now we're going to choose splash screen. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the static image. And it's told us that it's been set. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and reboot the system so that we can go ahead and take a look and see and be sure that it actually displays. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and shut down. Uh, I have a little bit of a delay that happens, a lag on reboots due to the capture being plugged in the way that I have it. So we'll be back momentarily. And as you can see, it's displaying our static image. So we know that this static image works fine. And that's how you go about working on static images. You can go ahead and place several in there if you want, and you can turn on the randomized feature. So every time that you boot, it will be a different image. Uh, otherwise, you can keep a static image. All right, we're going to go ahead and switch back over to our desktop because I'm going to discuss a little bit now about video splash screens. What I did in order to be able to build this is I went to a few different locations to find some uh, video and audio bytes that I could combine together to be able to show you what you could encounter. Okay, so just as a point of reference where I pick these items that we use today, I do have them saved in here. And first of all, I went to a royalty free site. Here we go. And this is free video footage, so it's free-video-footage.com. And I chose this little seven second blurp. And it's a audio free track. And it's royalty free licensing. No attributions are required or necessary. That's kind of funny, needed instead of needed. And then I went ahead and grabbed this vintage computer retro space. This is from uh, vedevo.net. And I went ahead and grabbed a couple different types of videos depending upon the frame rate and codecs being used. This is also royalty free. And then I went on over to Bulby's channel on YouTube. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description. Uh, this is actually the channel that we use to get all of our BGM music that we place in our default build. He does a lot of work. Uh, big shout out to, to him or her as a creator for content. And I went ahead and grabbed this and essentially I muxed this in with the video that I had downloaded just for the sake of this tutorial. So what I'm going to go ahead and show you here is the specifications on the videos that I created um, just for the tutorial and kind of explain it a little bit. So the first one that I created, if we go ahead and we come in here, we go to properties, you can go ahead and into details of any video and you can see where you're at for data bit rate, what the frames per second are and the audio, right? So it's really important that you realize that your your bit rate can't be too high otherwise the video is going to be very choppy the audio may be out of sync there could be other issues right so depending upon what board you're working with it could be our build with um, an xu4 uh, you could be doing it with the upcoming n2 you could be doing it with the rock pro 64 you could be doing it with a raspberry pi 3 uh, you could be doing it with an orange Pi board it doesn't make a difference because you need to take into consideration what data rate that your video can be encoded at i can't tell you exactly what it is it all varies depending upon the board's capability and uh, that's one of the reasons why like if you go out there you try to take a look and see for any types of tutorials or other information about how to create these video splash screens there's nothing really definitive out there because it's going to all vary upon the platform that you're trying to display this on so this right here though only gives you very basic information so now i'm going to go ahead and play the video in vlc to show you a little bit more
All right, so that's done playing, and now I'm going to go ahead and go back into it again. I'll go ahead and mute it so that you can hear me more readily, but we're going to kind of discuss about a little bit more information you want to take a look at. So, like I said, this is a, a video that I created specifically for this tutorial, right? Now what you want to take a look at when you're viewing these videos to get a little bit more information, if you're especially if you're using VLC, it comes in pretty handy. You want to come over to Tools and you want to come into Codec Information, right? So here in this case, you can see that I actually encoded this as H265. And it's at frame rate 30. And also as well, now when we come back in here and we take a look one more time at the properties, you see in the details that the data bit rate on this is 41,000 kilobits per second. That is a really high encoded rate. Uh, you most likely won't be able to run it on most SBCs out there. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the example of what to expect if, if you do do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy this over to our build. We're going to go ahead and navigate into our splash screens directory. We can see that we have that test static image that we used earlier in this tutorial. And of course still our default. So now we're going to go ahead and copy over this video. And this is strictly to show you what can happen uh, with uh, improperly encoded videos for the platform that you're working on. So now that we have this copied over, we're going to go ahead and swing back over to the build, actually on the capture. We're going to head on over into splash screens. And once again, we want a preview to be sure that it actually works. We're going to play a video splash screen, own, and now you see the new video that we placed in here. And as you can tell, the video is running pretty slow. Uh, a bit choppy, and we've actually lost the audio out of the video. And I'll go ahead and let this play for just another couple seconds. Oh, we got the audio back, but the audio is actually out of sync. So we know that this video splash screen just isn't going to work on boot because it won't work in the preview. So we're going to go ahead and back out. And now we're going to go ahead and swing back over to our desktop. Now since we know that video is not going to work, we'll go ahead and remove it. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the next video that I created. Okay, it's the same format, right? We've got um, our tutorial, YouTube video, Splash, and then it's ending out with the video that we downloaded here from the Space video. And when we take a look at that, now we're going to come into here into Properties on this one, and we're going to take a look at Details. And we see that this bitrate is lower on the one that I created with this and we see how many frames per second it's been dropped to 30 frames to 23 I'm gonna go ahead and play this one and as you can see while this plays through this time around I am gonna go ahead and pull up the codec information but you'll also see that the video quality doesn't take too too much of a hit it's not you know noticeable All right, so the music plays well. Go into our codec information, and this time around, it's H.264 MP4. We're still at 1920 by 1080. The frame rate is now instead 23 frames per second instead of 30. And the audio is the same. There's nothing that was different uh, about that. 
So what we will go ahead and do now is copy this one over to our build and we're going to take a look and see how well this runs. So now instead of being H265, we're H264. Frame rate is at 23 instead of 30 and that bit rate has been dropped down for the video from over uh, 40 thousand K down to 17,000 and change. Once again, we're going to click into splash screens and we want to do this each time. It just kind of makes things easier for the system to pick up the changes that you've made. We'll go into preview. I always do that with my controller, play video splash screen own. And now we see that we've got the second one we put in. We're going to go ahead and play this and take a look at it. Notice how the music finished. The music already finished, but the video is still playing. And that's because even though the video is rendering, the synchronization is off. And that once again has to do with too high of a bit rate on your video part of the encoded file. And we'll go ahead and swing back over to our desktop, discuss a little bit further. All right, so we're back over to desktop, and as you can see now, we're running into a situation, like I said, where, hey, great, the video played, but the audio was out of sync. So once again, we now know that in that case, because the audio seems to be playing cleanly, and the video plays cleanly, but the video ends after the audio, we have a bitrate issue with the video itself. So that's something that we want to take a look at. That means now... I went ahead and I did a third version of this file. Let me go ahead and delete the second one out. And on the third version, let's take a look at the specifications that I have here. So now this data bit rate on this file has been dropped to below 5,000 kilobits per second. Uh, the audio is the same. We're at 23 frames per second. Now let's go ahead and play this and take a look at the codec information. And once again, pay attention the first several seconds. I'll go ahead and let the video play. You'll see that you're really not seeing a um, quality issue with how the video renders. So moving from the high bit rate to a lower bit rate, yeah, when you're doing things like watching video, actually as in like a movie or TV show or something, you know, watching it for a long duration of time, there's an impact. Um, there's several people out there that are video files and, and audio files. That's important to them. On something like this, it's just a splash video to kick off something before you get into your front end of your gaming rig. So not so important. And once again, as you'll see, it renders perfectly fine. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and go into the tools, go to codec information. This time around, we're still using the MP4. We're still at the 1080. Frame rate still 23 frames per second. And so perfectly fine, right? We just lowered that bit rate. So now let's go ahead and see if this helps with our render when we attempt to preview it on our system. Go ahead and copy it over. And now we'll swing back over to the build. Heading back into splash screens, previews, once again, screwing up my button presses. It's always a struggle. All right, so now we see that new video that we just plopped in here. So let's see and keep our fingers crossed on whether or not this is gonna work for us.
Now you may have noticed on the video that the synchronization is just a little bit off and once again that's due to my capture. But as you could see the music faded out just a second or two before the video transitioned. Once again that's just due to the capture. I've done off capture testing excuse me of this and it it works perfectly fine. The, the music tails off as the video is fading. So it does exactly the way that I want to look at. So it looks in this case, right, like we could feel as if with the XU4, if you stay below 5,000 kilobits per second, that um, you know you should be all right. The audio rendering, once again, you can tinker around with that too. You can continue to tinker and actually get it perfect by once again looking how you do your encode and, and what bit rate. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and move back over to our desktop. And I want to go ahead and take a look at something with how you should be able to see where we're going with this, right? Is that these first few videos that we've been testing, they've all been custom made videos that I put together uh, and assembled. Now what we want to do is just to further reinforce this, let's take a look at this vintage computer space invaders file that I showed earlier on that I downloaded from that royalty free site. When we take a look at this, you know, this is a once again 1080 and we're at over 36,000 kilobits per second. We're at 29 frames per second. It says it has audio, but it's a silent playing video, so I'm not really sure what the deal is with that. Now we'll go ahead and pop in here and we're just going to take a look and confirm the codec on it again through this. And when we take a look at the codec information, we see MPEG for AVC. And you know, once again we can see here that we're running into Ah, oh, well, that might actually be something that I'm missing is that audio codec. All right, so anyway, back on task. Just for grins, because I know that a lot of people out there like to pull things from the internet off of various places, we're gonna go ahead and copy this over, and we're gonna go ahead and see how well this renders. So I'm expecting that it's going to have a rendering issue. Obviously, once again, there's no audio to go by either, but just from the video perspective, you know, we're seeing that it should be a nice smooth video, uh, there shouldn't be any hitches. There is one small portion in this video that they shared that actually has a, a dead spot, kind of. Here, we'll go back to this real quick just so we can show you. So after a couple seconds, I'm not really sure for whatever reason I've downloaded this a few times. It's got that little bit of a hitch. But like I said, let's go ahead and head on back over to the build. and take a look at it there. And now we see our vintage computer space invaders and let's see how it goes. And if you haven't noticed already, that froze up at that same spot for a really long time. The video is definitely lagging. And even though it's not choppy, it is definitely running very slow. We're going to go ahead and head back over to our desktop. So some people might say, oh my gosh, Slappy, you just wasted a bunch of minutes here, a bunch of time going over all this. Where's the meat and potatoes? I want to know how to be able to do stuff. 
etc. Well, I wanted to explain, like I said, the reason why you see the behavior that you're seeing, so that way you're better informed and you actually know what to do to try to go through these steps. We're going to go ahead and actually work on both of these videos on re-encoding them. And we'll start off with the vintage computer because that's where we left off. Just for fun, I'll show you how I made that video uh, that I used for the first one, kind of. I'm going to go ahead and detach the audio from this one and go ahead and add in my own. I use Movavi Video Studio. It's a fairly simple and easy to use, but it, it takes a little bit um, to learning, um, but really not too bad. And it also has its own wizard. So I'm going to go ahead and add media files. And we're going to go ahead and add this vintage computer. So normally you would see in here your audio stream. But as you can tell, actually, it looks like there's just some type of issue with it. It's not there. So with Movavi, just like a lot of other uh, editing software for video, you can detach the audio stream. So I'm going to go ahead and detach this. I'm actually going to just take it out. So now, essentially, I have a silent running video here, right? I want to go ahead and add in an audio clip. So I'm going to go to Add Media Files, and you can actually just do drag and drop for this. Now, since I pulled this off of YouTube, you can see, right, that there's that video that is in Bulby's a YouTube video. But I'm going to, once again, I'm going to instead, this time around, I'm going to go ahead and detach the audio. But this time, I'm going to select and highlight the video, and I'm going to pull it out and look at that. So now I need to go in and figure out what exactly I did. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and try to make this a little bit different. All right, so what I'm going to do here is actually instead I'm going to cut the video out. That's allowing me to keep the audio. And right around here, I'm going to go ahead and click on split. need to make sure I have the right file highlighted. And you notice here how I hit delete, right? And I deleted the entire thing. You can't do that with Movavi. Even though I split it, I needed to actually come over here and now see that I highlighted. And now I can delete that. So let's go ahead and play this and see how it goes. So we saw that the audio plays fine. I'm going to go ahead and select into my audio. I'm going to come into here. And I'm actually going to do a fade out of, let's say, three seconds. And I'll just go back to the video. All right. So once again as well, that's the audio portion here. On the video, I need to actually select the video, right? Because they were two different files originally. And I'm going to go ahead and fade out. And instead of three seconds, I'm going to do two and see what happens. So get, come over here more towards the end. All right, so I've gone ahead and created a quick custom video just to show you. Here, I'm going to go ahead and export it. And I'm going to do the highest rate that I can do. I'm going to go into my tutorials folder, select that folder. I'm going to name it Space Invaders 01. You can go into Advanced now, depending upon what software you're using, etc. I'm going to leave it at the 29 frames just for grins to see what happens. We're doing a variable bit rate at best quality stereo audio. And then once this is done exporting, don't want to worry about opening the output folder in this case. And I'm not going to worry about saving this because this was strictly for the tutorial.
So now we're going to go ahead and play this video uh, just on VLC, and we're going to take a look at it here. But let's see actually what Movavi did with it. Uh, it actually has a data bit rate of 71,000K, and we obviously know that that's not going to play on one of our SPCs. Now the reason why we want to do that at the highest on that export is because when we actually go into our software to do the conversion, we want to be sure that we have the best quality that we can get. So any quality that you find for anything online or if you create it yourself, make sure you do it as the best quality up front. And then you can go ahead and when you do your re-encoding, let that software do its magic because the better the source material is, the better your outcome is going to be. So we'll go ahead and remove the old one here, though, out of our build right now, just for sake of getting it done. And the software that I use is Handbrake. This is a free open source software. A lot of people use it. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop. Well, that was interesting. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this in. Now, when you use Handbrake and it comes up, this is what you're presented with. And you can actually choose different presets, etc. So if you come in here, what I've noticed is the best result anyway for any SBC. I, I've noticed the Android 1080 seems to work uh, well enough. So we're going to go ahead and give Android 1080p 30 frames per second a shot. So when we come in here along our tabs for any customization, we want to go ahead and change our frames per second. You can you could try to keep it at the 29 or the 30 frames. I just kind of noticed that the best luck is, has been a little bit below that, either 25, 24. 23.976 is kind of like an industry standard for many videos. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. So on the optimized video, and the nice thing about this software is that if you hover over certain places, it's going to tell you what it does. So for example, under, under encoder preset, adjust the encoder settings to trade off compression efficiency against encoding speed, right? So we don't really care about that. We're going to go ahead and leave that alone for now. The quality is where I tend to make my changes. Uh, I like leaving it at two-pass encoding. I seem to get uh, the best visual results from that. So on the average bit rate, we've already previously seen that, say, the 5,000 kilobits per second did seem to run well enough. Just for grins, I'm going to drop it down a little bit more, though, this time around, and I'm going to go to 4,000. The audio, we want to go ahead and leave the audio as it is. That's not a big deal. You know, you could always change it. Um, the original audio rate on the file, if you didn't notice, was 196, or excuse me, 197K. Right, so we'll go back over to that real quick in case you didn't notice it when I had it pulled up. Right, 197K. Uh, you know, so you could say for example put it at 192 we don't really want to mess with the dimensions we'll leave this alone otherwise and we've now set our video to Android 1080p modified 30 frames but once again modified to 23.976 got an average bit rate of 4,000 kilobits per second and we adjusted our audio to be 192 so once we do that, we can now go ahead and if we'd like, we can actually do a preview. And when you choose a preview, you can actually do it a couple different ways. You can do live preview, you can do use the system default player. So if I select that and then I select live preview, the software is going to go ahead and actually run through and do its encoding, but it'll be something that's actually cached. So it's not something that you've actually have as a final file in your system. And now you can see that it's going to go ahead and render for us. Excuse me. 
you're going to go ahead and see here that it's rendering for us a preview of the video of how it should look uh, when it's completed. And we can see that the video quality isn't too bad at all. And we saw, or excuse me, heard here at the end that the fade happened correctly. We're going to go ahead and come on down here to the Save As field and Browse, and we are going to go ahead and give it a name. I'm actually going to go ahead and call this, because this is my second shot with it, uh, the first one being the original encode. I'm just going to go ahead and call it 002. And now it's prepared for us to go ahead and encode. Now your encoding, depending upon the strength or the power of the machine that you're using and the, the video length um, can take a little bit of time or it could be very short. As you can see here, it's doing its first pass and then it's going to kick into the second pass. While it's doing that second pass, you can actually choose what to do here uh, with your system after it's done. You can even quit handbrake if you want, etc. I'm going to leave it at do nothing. And it's now saying that the queue is finished. We'll go ahead and head on over to our folder where we had the video created into. And let's take a look at it just on the system here. volume a little bit and it seems to be displaying fairly decent uh, we're not seeing any artifacting or issues and we'll take a listen here at the end and watch the video make sure that it does what we had intended and it matched so it should be fine and we'll go ahead now and get a copy of it over onto our build and then we're going to go ahead and preview it and see how it goes. All right, we're going to go ahead and run this and see how the video itself renders. Does the audio stay in sync and does it end uh, as it expected? Now that seemed to be pretty successful, um, a little bit more successful even than the, the 5K resolution. The video seemed to render just fine and it looked nice. So one final test will be a reboot and we'll go ahead and have it run live and we may very well have our completed successful splash video. What you need to do of course after you do the preview, right, is you want to be sure, of course, after you previewed the video that that's what you want to do. Now you need to go into Choose Splash Screen and choose the one that you want to use. And it's telling us that it's set. And now we can go ahead and shut down and bring the board back up and do a final test to validate that the video renders the way we want it with the audio playing correctly. And we will be back. All right, so now our board is coming online, and let's take a look. And I'd say that's pretty successful right there. I hope that this has been informative for you. I apologize for uh, the long duration of the tutorial. I know that some people would prefer to have, hey, just a very quick and dirty, bam, pick up this. Or if you've already got your stuff, open up Handbrake and go ahead and take care of the video encoding if it doesn't want to play right when you immediately put it onto your system. But I wanted to give, like I said before, an explanation of what's going on because I think that if you're more informed, you'll actually understand and then it'll kind of be like, ah, 
okay, so then in the future, you're not wasting your time spinning your wheels. You just don't want to run into a situation, right, where you're like, okay, well, I'm going to just start downloading all these videos because I want to build up a really nice splash screen list and library because you can also do the randomization for not just the static but also the video splash screens and then you end up getting really frustrated because videos don't work and you're pretty bummed out about it. This gives you the capability to actually render the videos properly so that they will work on your first shot or else possibly the second. You know, In the case of the XU4, I, I guess if you were looking for a quick answer, I would probably stay below the 5,000 kilobits per second. Your audio, there's no reason to be up above 192 kilobits per second. Yes, you can do 320. I've done that before. If you move, for example, over to the N2, well, the N2 does have a stronger graphical processor and it does have stronger CPU structure. So you could probably bump that up some on the quality if you really wanted to. One of the things to remember as well, again, is that your source material, you can't get a better rendering than what that source was. So if your source is something that you pulled off of YouTube and, you know, even if it's at, say, 1080p, you know, I'm not really sure what you're using to be able to pull videos off of YouTube or etc. If it's something that's, for example, at 720p, you can't just easily upscale it to 1080p and then upscale that bitrate. Like, let's say that they, they had a bitrate of only 800 kilobits per second. You're like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go into handbrake and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and change this up to 4,000 kilobits and it's going to get better it's not going to necessarily get better. It could actually possibly even turn out worse. So there's a lot of tweaking and different things you can play with. I would recommend that uh, when it comes to handbrake, you kind of do a little bit of research. There's plenty of videos out there on how to use it. Once again as well, I used a preset of the Android 1080p at 30 frames per second, and then I tweaked it. But there's all kinds of different ones that you can play around with to get the results that you're looking for. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Don't forget to do all those things that people do on the internet. Like, subscribe, share the video out. You know, this can also be used for standard RetroPie on various machines. Obviously, if you're doing RetroPie on PC, you can get away with doing much higher bit rates on your presentation. There's a lot of newer SBCs coming out that can render 4K, 30 at the least. So that's something to think about. Other than that, I hope you all have a great day. Take care till the next time.